Welcome to the Big Book Roundtable and the RICO 12 family of recovery resources targeted at people from all backgrounds, faiths, and places dealing with addictions of all varieties. RICO 12 is a resource for them, also the loved ones of addicts. My name is Justin B. I am a child of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a multidisciplinary addict, and I'm grateful to be living in the miraculous uh, state of recovery today, and I'm blessed to be the moderator of this roundtable. I'm joined today by David and by Nikki. And we're super excited to be here today as we swim through, snorkel through the big book with you. Um, David, why don't you take just a second and say hi? Hey, everybody. David G. from Oklahoma. I'm an alcoholic and addict of many sorts. Grateful for a recovery date in Alcoholics Anonymous of August 8th, 1994. And an emotional recovery date in Sexholics Anonymous of October 1st, 2019. Glad to be here with you and Nikki today, Justin. Thank you. Thanks, David. Nikki, you're up. Hi, everybody. I'm Nikki M. And I'm a grateful member of many fellowships. I entered the rooms, oh, 11 years ago on Valentine's Day. So coming up in 2024, Valentine's Day, I I will be here 12 years. There's nowhere else for me to go. So I can, it says, you will know a new freedom. And I found it here in the rooms of any anonymous that, that will take me. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. And I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. I love that we're like in this big triangle. It's an inverted triangle of the recovery triangle, but it's still a triangle. We've got the the Northwest, we've got the Northeast in, in Toronto, and we've got the South Central, South Central uh, in Oklahoma. Love it. All right. Today, we're going to be jumping into the, continuing into the doctor's opinion, and we'll be reading uh, from the second letter that is written by Dr. Silkworth in the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, starting on page XXVII, which is Roman numeral 27. And we'll read about a page and a half of this letter today. Um, The last couple of episodes we've recorded in this chapter have been really powerful, and I look forward to digging deeper into this right now. So I'm going to start reading here on uh, page uh, Roman numeral 27. The doctor writes, The subject presented in this book seems to be of paramount importance to those afflicted with alcoholic addiction. I say this after many years' experience as medical director of of one of the oldest hospitals in the country treating alcoholic and drug addiction. There was, therefore, a sense of real satisfaction when I was asked to contribute a few words on a subject which is covered in such masterly detail in these pages. We doctors have realized for a long time that some form of moral psychology was of urgent importance to alcoholics, but its application presented difficulties beyond our conception. What with our ultra-modern standards, our scientific approach to everything, we are perhaps not well equipped to apply the powers of good that lie outside our synthetic knowledge. Many years ago, one of the leading contributors to this book came under our care in the in this hospital, and while here, he acquired some ideas which he put into practical application at once. Later, he requested the privilege of being allowed to tell his story to other patients here, and with some misgiving, we consented. The case, the cases we have followed uh, through have been most interesting, in fact. Many of them are amazing. The unselfishness of these men as we have come to know them, the entire absence of profit motive, and their community spirit is indeed inspiring to one who has labored long and wearily in this alcoholic field. They believe in themselves and still more in the power which pulls chronic alcoholics back from the gates of death. Of course, an alcoholic ought to be freed from his physical craving for liquor, and this often requires a definite hospital procedure, before psychological measures can be of maximum benefit. We believe, and so suggested a few years ago, that the action of alcohol on these chronic alcoholics is a manifestation of an allergy, that the phenomenon of craving is limited to this class and never occurs in the average temperate drinker. These allergic types can never safely use alcohol in any form at all, and once having formed the habit and found they cannot break it, once having lost their self-confidence, their reliance upon things human, their problems pile up on them and become astonishingly difficult to solve. Frothy emotional appeal seldom suffices. The message which can interest and hold these alcoholic people must have depth and weight. In nearly all cases, their ideals must be grounded in a power greater than themselves if they are to recreate their lives. 
Man, there's so much in here, and I'm really looking forward to getting into this. David, why don't you start off and share with us a few things that as we read through that, that you find um, worthy of diving deeper into. All right. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Nikki. Uh, What a powerful, powerful letter here. The subject presented in this book. You know, for so long, I thought that was alcohol. I thought that was drugs. I thought that was lust. I thought that was alcoholism. I thought that was all of these things. But as you read on through this, especially when you get toward the bottom of this page, it's going to begin to explain what a spiritual experience looks like. And it's going to do it in the manifestation of the form of Bill and these other alcoholics at the time. But he says, I say this after many years experience as director of one of the oldest hospitals in the country treating alcoholic and drug addiction, which we know to be the town's hospital in New York City. And this was around 1937 when this was all taking place. So he in this next little paragraph here, he says there's real satisfaction when I was asked to contribute a few words on a subject which is covered so ma- in such masterly detail of these pages. Keywords, these pages. We share these in the rooms with each other, but the masterly detail of what this looks like are in these pages. So notice how he says we now. He's no longer talking uh, singular. It is now plural. It's now he has the support of other doctors behind him. We doctors have realized for a long time that some form of, you know, he calls it moral psychology, and it says with our, and he's talking about doctors ultra moderns are talking about doctors. So now he's got strength and, and he's moving. And so when you get toward the bottom of that, it says the powers of good. See, that's the subject of the book. That's what the true subject is. Uh, many years ago, one of the leading contributors to the book came under our care in this hospital. We know that's Bill W. And while here, he acquired some, and this is our key word here, guys ideas this is what this whole thing is about see I, I don't drink i don't drug i don't do any of that stuff anymore but see i never did suffer from any of that I suffer from false ideas he says he'll tell me pretty soon you don't know the difference between the true and the false and he's not talking about those addictions he's talking about these ideas and and notice what it says he put them into practical application at once without a spiritual experience we don't do things like that we don't put those kind of ideas in We don't request the privilege of being allowed to tell our stories to others. We don't really care. But it tells me right there that telling my story is a privilege, not all the sickness, but what the subject in the book presents is the power to overcome all that stuff. And look what it says. You know, they consented and and all of this amazing stuff began to happen. The unselfishness of the man, you know, I mean, this just does not happen. And there again, They believe, and that's the key word, that belief. Now I believe in me, and still more in this power. That's the subject presented in the book, and I can't say it enough. And so, as Justin read, that the phenomenon of craving on, what is that, 28 XXVIII, this phenomenon of craving is limited to this class and never occurs. If I've had an abnormal reaction to anything that demands more of the same, the set up a craving, stay with my mother, for instance, I can, she can drink alcohol. I can't. If that allergy has never occurred in her and it's occurred in me, even one time, that's going to put me physically different than her. Mentally, we're crazy as hell. We're the same. But here is my instruction. These allergic types can never safely use whatever it may be in any form at all. And as you read on down, it says in nearly all cases, they're they're drinking, they're drugging, they're lusting. They're, no, their ideas must be grounded in a power greater than self if we are to recreate our life. And we know that's the first nine steps of Alcoholics Anonymous in our book. We recreate our life through those first nine steps. Our ideas change, our beliefs, our concepts drinking, drugging, lust, and eating, whatever it may be. We're neutral in those areas now. We don't do it. The miracle isn't only that I haven't drank whiskey and slept with somebody's wife today. The miracle is I haven't even wanted to do any of that stuff. I didn't think about it. I haven't thought about it at all. And that's what I used to think about all the time. So what changed? My thinking. My life has been recreated through this. So thank you, Justin, for letting me share. 
Thank you, David. I really appreciate that. And I've got a, a good question to follow up on you here in a few minutes. But first, I want to hear what Nikki took out of this. What were some of the things that jumped out at you, Nikki, that you would like to, to expound on? Well, thank you, friends. And I'm just so grateful to be at the table with you, you know, beautiful children of God and men of God, really. That's, this is why I love to be in this program. I can I get to see the face of men and 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 God's creation. So, you know, what, what sticks out for me, of course, is, and I, I, I put up at the top of this page, I have a chronic disease that doesn't go away. You know, it's not acute. So I have a moral, moral problem. I love that word, whatever I see that, because I have a lot of friends in program who gets scared that we're going to have to say the actions, you know, it says we discuss what we do with one other person, but don't go to a room and start discussing the rooms aren't so safe. So it's a moral, which means I'm con concerned with my principles of right and wrong behavior. I don't have those when I come in here. I don't have, I have a moral problem and on the scientific approach line out. It didn't work for me. Synthetic knowledge. It's all fake news. This is this is beyond human aid. And David said it, the power of good. I had that circled where it's ideas, practical application. This is a program of action. I cannot just sit and read the steps. Doesn't say these are the steps we read and talked about. These are the steps we took. And, you know, number one, I have to be unselfish, dying of the self. I have to trust this process. Abstinence of profit motive. This is a free program, everybody. And I, I, I instill that a lot when I'm sponsoring. Like, you buy your coffee, I'll buy mine. Now, does that mean, you know, Justin and David, when I'm sponsoring a woman in a, in a shelter, and, and I, I do that, of course I'll buy the coffee. But when we get into, you know, it doesn't end. It, where does it stop? I buy you dinner, the next thing you're taking me to an all-inclusive in Jamaica. Where does it stop? We're fully self-supporting here. No, it's abstinent a profit mo motives that's why this thing works i've seen it and a community spirit i'm never going to find i have not in my 50 years on the planet found anywhere where i'm accepted the way i'm accepted with you guys you know so i just love this and you know gates back from the gates of death miracles happen and that's where my hope is and so to recreate our life that that is the big thing i have on here and of course frothy emotional appeals seldom suffice so al-anons codependence when you're going please stop don't you love me get armed with the facts we've lost the power of choice it's like when they say can't you stop nagging me no you've lost the power of choice frothy emotional appeals please if you love me son you'll get your passport i said it still hasn't happened and he still loves me and this about recreating my life means I don't do the things I used to do. And I, as David said, not only do I not do it, I don't want to do it. I've been totally recreated. I'm not the same person I was when I walked into the gates of, or the doors of, or that basement church room of Alcoholics Anonymous. I have been recreated. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, David. You know, the, the things that jumped out at me um, were, were touched on by both of you, I think. But I love how, how, how I read this. Dr. Silkworth admits to the fact that I, I see the issue. I don't get the spiritual side of it, but these guys get the spiritual side of it. And for whatever reason, it works. The synthetic uh, knowledge only takes us so far. But the spiritual thing, this powers, the powers of good, the, the, uh, they believe in themselves still more and still more in the power, which pulls alcoholics back from the gates of death, um, a power greater than themselves. They must, their ideals must be grounded in a power greater than themselves. Uh, and, and that, uh, you know, this, this spiritual program, once again, I wanted just the pill. I didn't want the spiritual. I thought I had the spiritual. I thought I knew all that side, but I was really sick in that. I just wanted the the physical fix and it didn't, it, the physical wasn't where it was at. Well, it was there too, but the spiritual is where I also needed to, to really grab this spiritual program of action and run with it. And that's kind of my takeaway from this. And I love, I love the, uh, 
the what I see is uh, humility, I guess, on Dr. Silkworth's part that, you know, coming from a doctor who specializes in alcoholic and drug uh, treatment to say, there's part that I don't know, but this guy somewhere, he's got it and and listen to it because it seems to be working. All right. So that was my the the thing that really jumped out at me. Let's let's jump into this. I've got a couple of questions here. David, you you said you said something to the effect of I've got to talk about oh you you said, you know what? I don't even think of I didn't even think about, you know, uh drinking or drugging or uh, sleeping with another person's wife or whatever it may be. You know, in my own life I have been told in certain places, hey, don't even talk about that stuff because that will trigger you or trigger somebody else to want to go do those things. Talk to me a little bit about that process and how the how you were able to talk about that without even thinking about it or or being worried about going and acting out on those those thoughts and 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 words. Yeah, absolutely, Justin. Thank you for that question. Uh, the reason that that's occurred in my life today is because I've recovered from a seemingly hopeless state of mind and hell it was just seemingly to begin with. But what you read there today on uh, 28 Roman numeral 28, you know, my ideas must be grounded in a power greater than self. If I am to recreate my life, you know, I'm twice born today because of what this has done for me, to me and to so many others. Uh, it continues to tell us as we get up into step 11, step 10, that our thinking is now on a much higher plane, that our thoughts, you know, these are the thoughts that must go with us constantly. How can I best serve thee? Thy will not mine be done. Through the process of this work, and particularly after the fifth step, taking the fifth step is the way the book outlines, there was a new creature that, that emerged from that. A lot of people, when they do the four step, they say, you know, that really helped me to see who I was. That didn't happen for me. What happened for me was I seen who I was not. It's who I'd become based on a narrative that was given to me by self. And I took actions based on that and created a reality. So hell yeah, my thoughts were like that all the time. But the man who takes the first five steps here is not the same man that takes the last seven the book says we're walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. And it's not talking about in just that particular area of step five and after we're talking about from now on. And if I truly, truly had that experience, my thinking is going to be on a much higher level and that stuff is not going to be there. Now I'm not saying that I will never think about that again. That thought will probably roll through, but now I have the tools and the ability to catch that thought. Ask God to remove that thought, discuss that thought pretty promptly with somebody, make amends if I've said something I shouldn't have, and then turn my thoughts. That's the key. Turn my thoughts to someone I can help. And when I do that, that takes that type of thinking away. That's why I started Man in Step 10 from day one. People say, you can't do that. You shouldn't do that. I've had a couple of uh, of uh, meetings just recently ask me not to come back because of that. And that's great. Hey, that's wonderful. You know, I, I turn my thoughts to helping someone else rather than what I wanted to do to them. And uh, there again, uh, all is well today. So I love your question and, and I love your podcast. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. Thank, thank you. you. Too. Yeah. And thank you, David. And and where you took this is, is a great segue into what I want to ask Nikki. So you talked about the the person who took the first five steps is not the same person that takes the the next seven steps, and that that change happens. And I wanted Nikki, I wanted to take you to this last phrase that we read: if they are able to recreate their lives, you know, the previous is they they must be, their ideals must be grounded in a power greater than themselves. If they are to recreate their lives, Nikki, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your experience with your own life recreation, and maybe what you've observed as people have recreated their their lives through this program. Okay, that's a great question. Thank you guys so much. I'm just learning so I'm so grateful. Uh, I watch a lot of miracles because I sponsor a lot. I mean, this is what this I do sponsor a lot. God has put me in a position. And you know, when I come in here, you know, I, I've I've lost the ability to love, you know, not even myself. I don't love myself. I've I've lost it along the way through an event, through through a series of events, somewhere along the way. And what happens is this 12-step program 
enables me to recapture the ability to love again, love others and love myself. You know, so what, what the question was again, Justin, to how do I watch it recreate my life? Yeah. How, how has that uh, been manifested in your life, the recreation of your life and how have you observed it in others? Okay. Well, what happens is, you know, I don't, like I said, I don't do the things I used to do. And I just don't think the way I used to think is what happens. I've been totally, as it says, reborn. I took a step three with somebody today and it says we were reborn. And I, and she's a woman. I said, you know how hard it is to give birth to a young girl. And, and that birthing process is, is not easy. And once it happens, you know, we're crying, you're a dad, you see, we're crying our eyes out. It's a, it's a nightmare. We're never going to do it again, but five minutes later, five seconds later, they put that baby and you're ready to do it all over again. Life is great. That's what happens when you watch someone recreate their life. How do they do that through the 12 steps? That's the only way of recreating of your life in this program that I've seen. So every day I have to admit I'm powerless. I can't manage my life every day. I have to believe that this power can restore me to the ability to behave like a normal good citizen of this world. That's, that's how simple it is. Cause I don't do those things. I'm not kind. Naturally. I'm not loving. What are my behaviors? What are the things that drive me? My fear drives me, my self-centeredness, my self-pity drives me. So I make this decision every day. And what happens is through this process, I re I actually see things a different way. I don't look at you like an object. I look at you as a person. I don't look at that food as I need and want it. I look at it as, is it going to nourish me? I don't look at that alcohol. Is it going to get me high? If you're a real alcoholic, how are you looking at it? I can never do that again. I can never look at a man or a woman that way. It just depends on what the, what the thing is, but it does center in my mind. And this is how it's really happened for me, Justin. I've never left the rooms. I've come in and I've never left the rooms. That's how it happens. I watch other people transform. It's like a butterfly. We talk about it. You know, it's a butterfly effect and it's a butterfly process. You have to liquefy and be reborn not this is not easy in the book in a few pages bill w will say it simple but not easy a price must be paid to what to recreate your life to get a new one beautiful thank you so much nikki thank you so much david um before we close up let's do a one minute wrap up what's the takeaway that you got out of this david that you'd like to share with us and that you will you know, use it using your life as you move forward from today. Well, I will continue to use what has always worked here for all of these years to continue to allow this power to recreate my life and to be at one with that. Uh, that's my takeaway from this is that in nearly all cases, nearly all, not, not all, but nearly all those who are really serious about this, Together, uh, we we recreate our life. We become one with that what is, what always was. One of the things that I ask people, especially whenever I get them over to around step two, I'll ask them to, to think about the ocean and the waves in the ocean and ask them, do you think the waves are separate from the ocean? And most of them will say yes. And I said, is water water or is it not? Is it just different form by chance? And it's almost like the light comes on. It's like, yes, yes, water is water. It, it just is. And so, you know, recreating our lives is, it's beautiful. People say you don't have the power to create. No, we do have the power to create. The power is within. And our life is is a recreation. That's a living testimony to many people today. I sponsor lots and lots and lots of people as well. And I've watched them. The ones that go through this process, their life is recreated because their life is their actions and their will is the, you know, is their thoughts. So that's what's changed. Their thoughts have changed. They're no longer thinking about those things. So they're not acting on those things. Their lives have changed. So that'll be my takeaway always, uh, especially with this page here. So thank you, Justin. Thanks, David. Appreciate that. All right, Nikki, what's, what's a takeaway for you from what we've discussed and read today? Well, that I, I never can stop learning, but I guess I'll just go back one line where it says the message which can interest and hold these 
alcoholic addicted people must have depth and weight. You know, it must have depth and weight. And what is must? Must, I'm obligated. It's imperative. It's a need. It's a duty that I'm armed with the facts, that I'm in a book, in a room that comes with a, a book called the big book. You know, that I'm, I, I know this language, that I, that I Google words that I do not know, that I share my experience, strength, and hope, that I can interest and hold these addicted people depth and weight. That's with anybody. Because remember, we practice these principles in all our affairs. So when I'm out practicing these principles with everybody, do I carry a message that can interest and hold these people? You know, all the people I'm around, a message of love, understanding, compassion, hope you know, excitement, enthusiastic. People are walking around in my city with a real long face right now, you guys. You know, I live in a big city and there's a troubled world out there and I can be the bright spot in anyone's day. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you, David. My takeaway is very similar to both of yours. Um, this this concept of recreation, this concept of being being changed so that I can be a cha- an agent of change. Uh, in my own life and perhaps influence somebody else. Uh, one of my uh, one of my former sponsors, who I still co- stay in contact with a lot, um, used to talk about uh, the one day at a time process being a form of rebaptism every day. He talked about being rebaptized into a new life, into a new beginning every day, and just taking that one day. And that's that's kind of where it's really hitting me today. Is each day is a day when I can take this, <laughs> take this message into the world. When I can take this hope, I can take this new creation into the world and hopefully be reflect some sort of light to others. All right, thank you so much for your for for your shares, Nikki and David. This is so so good stuff that really helps me a ton. And I'm sure there are people out there that are just. Um, having their minds blown just like I am. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all in the listening audience for being there. Uh, keep keep swimming through there. Keep reading and applying these principles that we learn in the big book. If I'm not applying it, it's not doing me any good. So let's get at applying these things. To learn more about RICO 12 and what we're doing and how you can support these projects, go to RICO12.com. To learn more about any of the other projects that David and Nikki are working on, check out the links in the show notes to those. And join us in the fellowship of the spirit and come trudge this adventurous and amazing road of happy destiny. And let's all have a recreation of our lives. Work it. You are worth it. 